Welcome to Linux in the Shell, episode 15, part 3 of Top, Controlling Top. My name is Dan Washko, I'll be your host. Remember to head on over to the website, linuxintheshell.org, and check out the write-up for this episode to get the full skinny on top, plus the other two episodes, if you have not caught them already. Today we're going to talk about the Controlling Top. Uh, previous two episodes, we discussed the summary summary area, which is that area up here, and then the task area, which is this area down below. Today, we are going to talk about some of the keys to control top. First and foremost, you see that top is running in the background here, and it's doing some stuff. You see that it's uh, refreshing every three seconds. Uh, so let's start there. If you wanted to change the refresh rate, you can press the D key or the S key and you'll see that it says change delay from three seconds to one second. And of course now you'll see that it refreshes on every second. Uh, I can change it again to five seconds and it refreshes slower than it did before every five seconds. But for now, let's just set it back to the default three. So we get some going on there. Um, how to change the or alter the task display or what it's sorting on down there in the task area is pretty simple. First what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the X key to highlight the field <coughs> that it is sorting on. You can see that it's on CPU right now. Now if I wanted to change that to memory I can use the greater than key to move to the right and I could use the less than key to move to the left. Just like that. And as I move through these fields you see that it shows which one I'm cycling on. And we'll sort it that way. Now, last episode if you recall I was wondering what that zombie process is. Well there it is. X-Win Info. And that's something to do with GDK Record my desktop. Pulling information like that. So that's what that zombie process is from. Anyway, you can also, there's some hotkeys that you can use uh, instead of cycling through with the um, greater than or less than. You can use capital M, which will take you for me to memory, so that's shift M. You could use capital P, which will take you to CPU, which is the default. You could use capital N, which will take you to process ID. Very simple, very simple ways to control top or how you're displaying top. Um, there's another one, capital T, which will do it by time plus. But then again, any other field, you're going to have to use the greater than or less than keys. Now also what you can do here at this point is it sorts it from greatest to least. So it's, it goes from a value of from highest value to lowest value in a lot of these cases. So if we went and sorted it on PID, it goes from highest to lowest. You can change that by pressing capital R, which will then sort it from lowest to highest. As you can see, if we go by PID right there, lowest to highest is easy to see. Capital R again switches it back from highest to lowest. Uh, you can then cycle through each one of these by pressing the down arrow key, which will cycle down one line at a time. Our up arrow key will cycle it up one arrow at a time. You can press page down, which will go down by pages. See right there. And you can do end, which will take you to the bottom. As you can see, I can't go any lower. The lower I go, it just rolls off the screen. Or you can do home, which will take you back all the way up to the top. I can't go any higher. Now, sometimes you see that as I'm hitting things on here, you notice some of these keys are refreshing the values. Uh, Instead of waiting for the delay to finish, you can press space or enter, space or enter, and it will refresh top. You can also, if you're at the top and you hit the up arrow, it's going to refresh it also. So that's something there. You can do some searching with top by pressing the capital L. And let's say I want to locate XFCE4. And I hit that in, and it shows everything that's associated with XFCE4. Now, there's a lot of things that pop up here, not necessarily XFCE4 match in the screen, but chances are that if I were to press the F key to get the field list, I could probably find one of these fields in here that are associated with XFCE4. Um, we can add that, and I'm not sure I'm going to get it. We'll add that data. Let's see if that did it. 
No, well, something. Uh, these are all then associated with XFCE4, so if I hit the ampersand, it'll keep cycling through XFCE4 entries until it's, it's done there. Um, now, what I can also do in top, as you notice, let me cut back a second, I press the F key to get into the fields. I showed this last episode. Let's, uh, let's toggle off these fields because we don't need them all on there, or at least I don't. So I don't want to show those fields anymore. But, uh, what am I doing wrong? Enter or left commits. Pressing the wrong. Well, there we go. Damn. Why wasn't it doing on the space for me? Oh, there we go. I must have been hitting the wrong button. Sorry about that. So when I'm done there, so I get back to the normal view. I can... choose to sh display processes from a specific user by you pressing the U key and typing in a name right there. So I see all the processes by my user account. If I press U again and hit enter, it takes me back to just being my the, the default view of showing all users. So if I did user root, I can see root user for everybody. And I can highlight this and say Let's let's get uh, order by there, and I can see all the users that are not root here. Let me just go with uh, whoop. That's not what I wanted to do. So let's let's uh, change the sort field so you can see that there's Dan and Dbus. So if I wanted to do user Dbus, you'd only see one value in here, and user. Enter shows everybody. Now, when I'm limiting something right off the bat, so if I were to say user dbus, when I'm limiting something, I can revert all limitations by hitting the equals key, and it gets rid of all the limitations that I put in there. So those are some pretty handy, uh, handy keys. Now, I'm going to talk about some different modes that you can go into in top, and I've spoken about these previously in the other shows, but just just as for your sake, capital H will switch you into threads mode, and notice that it says threads up here on the second line, so instead of um, tasks, it displays everything by threads. And then capital C will show coordinates, sorry about that. Um, that's not the one I was looking for. Um, commu cumulative mode, which is capital S which commu cumulative time is on, which shows CPU time. That includes all the processes dead children from when it started. And you could capital S again will turn it off. Then there's uh, capital I, which turns IRIX mode on and off. Remember, IRIX mode controls or dictates the percentage of CPU. In IRIX mode, multiple CPUs, like if I press the one key, you see I have two CPUs here, a dual core system. Um, the value of 100% uh, is 100% of one CPU, so it totals it for 200%, uh, 100% 200 per CPU. So when the IRIX value and percentages down here is going to be a uh, percentage of 200%, whereas Solaris mode is going to be a value of 100%, which is both CPUs. So let's, uh, whoop, I didn't want to do re-nice yet. I wanted to get their CPU. There we go. Okay. So those are a couple of modes. There's another mode, threads mode, or hierarchical tree mode, which is shift V, capital V, which shows all the processes in a hierarchical tree um, if, uh, stemming from the parent. So that's a, a handy way of looking at processes. You can toggle that on with the shift V. Uh, I don't need scroll coordinates on there anymore. That's not important for me at this moment. Um, so those are the four basic modes that you can switch on and off. Now, they're not the only modes, but to show some of the rest of this stuff, I need to quit out of here. Uh, so I'm going to clear the screen, and I'm going to say, all right, let's, uh, let's start top and look only at processes by a specific user, uh, and that would be Dan. Right there, remember how I show this? So you're only seeing my processes right there, nobody else's. You don't have to exit top to 
change this, you just press the equals key and it shows processes from everybody. Uh, so let's let's get a process list here. So I'm just going to pick a few at random. I'm going to do top P. If you pass the P option, it says by PID. So I can do top P 864, 994, 996, and when I hit enter, it only shows me those processes. Now, again, what I can do at this point is I can hit equals to get rid of that, but if I really wanted to go back and change that list, I'd have to quit and start again, just like that. So there's uh, there's that simple mode. Now, there's another mode um, called batch mode, but actually, let me, let me before I go to batch mode, let's talk about iterations. Um, you can specify a number of iterations that top can run by the dash N. So what I'm going to do here to show this really quickly is I'm going to do a dash D for one second and iterations five. So when I start this up, you're going to see one, two, three, four, five, and then it quits out. Um, so that you can specify a number of iterations then to quit. Now, there's a mode in here called batch mode. And what batch mode will do is it will bring top up in a way that it, there, you can't pass any command keys to it or strokes. It will not accept any input. It's just going to show a top screen and show it for a set number of intervals that you specify and then quit. And it's useful for passing the output of top to another application or to a file. So top B N 5 D 1 is going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, five and it's going to quit out of batch mode so I can pass all that task information down there it's going to show the full thing now if I just did top B and didn't specify an interval it's going to keep going forever until I I can't I can't I can press keys and stuff but it's not going to do anything uh, as you can see I have to actually hit control C to get out of it so that's that's batch mode right there and useful for doing things uh, passing information at top to a program or a file. Let's talk about the last mode and two other features of top that uh, are important. Um, secure mode. If you run top in secure mode, which is a dash S, you notice that it, I, I brought up a command. Dash S is secure mode, and you, do, you have some limitations in here, particularly with two commands that I'm going to talk about next kill and re-nice. So secure mode is a protective mode of top. So if you're running top as visible as a as the root user, chances are you should be running it or it's highly recommended that you run it in secure mode so someone can't come in here and start controlling processes. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's run top here as my average user. I'm running here. And let's say that I want to re-nice a process. Well, I can do that by pressing the R key. And it asks me for the PID of the process to re-nice. So I'm going to choose something that's not very important. Uh, first off, let me choose the PID process. So I'm going to do one two six one and I'm going to re-nice it to a value of negative five so it gives higher priority to top remember the values are negative nineteen to positive nineteen now I can do that again re-nice uh, one what was it one two six one and I can give it a value of three hundred but it's only going to set the value of top to 19. I can do renice1261 and give it a value of negative 15 and it'll tell me I do not have permission to do that. You can only set as a non-root user only set up values between negative 10 to 19. Remember negative numbers are higher priority so negative 19 is the highest priority 20 is the lowest. You can also kill. Uh, if you hit k press K it'll ask what PID to kill, and I'll say 1261, and it'll ask me what signal to pass, what 15 signal. Now, generally, you're going to only pass 1 or 9, so I'll pass 9, and it kills me right out of top. You see that right there? I'm out of top. So top will do that. It will allow you to kill that. Now, if I run top in secure mode, and I try and pass re-nice, it says unavailable in secure mode. Kill says unavailable in secure mode. Um, I can change fields and stuff, but there's some things that I can't do in secure mode. So that in a nutshell, I think I've covered just about everything that I wanted to, is controlling top. Uh, different things that you can do, different keystrokes, so you saw what was going on. Uh, I'll be back here next time for the final episode, I hope, of top, talking about different task windows 
uh, alternate windows and stuff like that. So we'll finish up with top hopefully in the next episode, and I thank you for your time, and have a great day.